the thing to remember about trade is that 95% of the world's consumers live outside our borders, right? 95%. And growth rates outside the United States, um, particularly in emerging economies, are significantly faster than the growth of the U.S. economy. So that's where we need to be focusing. That's where we, you know, those are the consumers with, with incomes to buy, and they should be buying our stuff. We want them to be buying our technologies. We want them to be buying our pharmaceuticals, our medical equipment. Uh, we want them to be, we want them to be tourists who are flying on our airplanes. We hope they'll be coming here and enjoying our, our uh, tourist attractions. I mean, exports come in a lot of different forms, both goods and services. Uh, and there's a lot, there's a great deal of, of potential and unrealized potential. I think of value-added exports, not necessarily, quote, knowledge-intensive exports, uh, and that gets you into a much broader range than the, quote, knowledge-intensive exports that, that are in the McKinsey study. But it is, uh, how you define it is less important than the, than the conceptual framework. Uh, I think it's worth noting, as the study does, how much air, uh, airframe aircraft is, is part of that. The biggest import number is automobiles, and has been for many, many years. Uh, and that is a consumer, pre you're looking at a consumer preference um, uh, and awfully hard to have a discussion about, you know, what do you do about that? Then you've got categories like, um, uh, and this is the, the, the category that has, according to the study, widened the most over the last several years uh, in the computer peripherals, um, and uh, the communications, telecom uh, area, um, and, and semiconductors. Well, I do think um, that there are some things that we could be doing that are pointed out in the study that would make it more likely that we would be exporting more, you know, producing more and exporting more of these products in the United States. Uh, which is, I think, a, 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 a good way of looking at it. Um, corporate tax rates, a good example. Our taxes are much, corporate taxes are much higher than virtually every one of our competitors. And the effective tax rate puts us like right in the middle of the OECD um, countries, which is not acceptable and, and does not promote uh, innovation and is not a formula for encouraging U.S. companies to invest here as distinct from other places. So there are a lot of U.S. corporations that have a lot of money uh, that they have generated overseas, which they can't bring home because it would be too expensive the ta in terms of the tax rate. And if we had a territorial system of taxation, if we had a simplified tax code, there are a whole lot of if we had, if we had, if we had. Um, we would be much more efficient. We would be, we, we would be, you know, the simplified tax code. We would probably be generating as much, perhaps even more revenues because of, because of the enhanced competitiveness, who knows. Um, but the situation at, as it currently exists, we're just putting a, a much heavier tax burden on, on uh, corporations that, that uh, are doing business here, or trying to do business here. Well, immigration policy, uh, where we could be encouraging the best and the brightest in the STEM areas, the science and technology areas, not to take the PhDs they got here um, at U.S. universities and go home with them to India or wherever, but to stay here and use them to, to um, um, invest and work in and, and, and innovate here. Regulatory reform. I mean, we are layering regulation on top of regulation on top of regulation. We have government agencies that are regularly harassing um, companies to the point where, you know, companies think twice about investing or investing more here and they invest overseas. But but the good news is you have um, foreign direct investment coming to the United States. You have U.S. companies continuing to invest here. Our manufacturing output in the United States has been growing steadily with the exception of one year 
uh, during the recession. It, it's, it's been steadily growing. The challenge is manufacturing employment has not been growing. And that really is attributable to technology and productivity enhancements. Uh, and so there we get into the other aspects, you know, other aspects of the, of the McKinsey study um, having to do with education, having to do with other game changers that could provide um, employment opportunities going forward in the future.